بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا تنادي فهمه يا بني قوم يسودا أعيد للدنا أمجاد عصر وفل بالحديد لنا القيد أخطر ما قرأت في صحيح البخاري كتاب الصلاة أخطر ما قرأت حديث أن المرأة كالكلب والحمار تقطع الصلاة يا ساتر المرأة كالكلب والحمار تقطع الصلاة لو واحد لمسها قبل ما يروح يصلي وهو متوضي ينقض الوضوء بتاعه ويروح يتوضى تاني. انا ذلك دليل على هذا الكلام؟ اه اللي هو صحيح البخاري كتاب الصلاه. مه. في صحيح البخاري. نعم. او طبعا بتخلي الانسان يفكر ليه؟ طب هل فكرت المراه المسلمه في وضعها هذا؟ هل فكرت؟ صحيح مسلم بوك 004 نمبر 1032 Abu Dha reported, the Messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, said, When any one of you stands for prayer and there is a thing before him equal to the back of the saddle that covers him and in case there is not before him, a thing, equal to the back of the saddle, his prayer would be cut off by, passing of an, ass, woman and black dog. I said, O oh Abu Dha, what feature is there in a black dog which distinguish it from the red dog and the yellow dog? He said, Oh. Son of my brother, I ask the Messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, as you are asking me. And he said, The black dog is a devil. What Zakaria Budras fails to do is showing the hadith which nullify his claim narrated Abu Salah as salmon. I saw Abu said al Qudri praying on a Friday, behind something which acted as a sutra. A young man from Bani Abi Mu'ayt, wanted to pass in front of him, but Abu said repulsed him with a push on his chest. Finding no alternative he again tried to pass but Abu Sa'id pushed him with a greater force. The young man abused Abu Sa'id and went to Marwan and lodged a complaint against Abu Sa'id and Abu Sa'id followed the young man to Marwan who asked him no oh, Abu Sa'id. What has happened between you and the son of your brother? Abu Sa'id said to him. I heard the prophet saying, if anybody amongst you is praying behind something as a suitor and somebody tries to pass in front of him. Then he should repulse him and if he refuses, he should use force against him for he is a Satan. Here we clearly see that a prayer will be cut off by anybody who passes by in front of the praying person. The Prophet clearly said, anybody, also men. So the claim that a woman is compared to a dog or a donkey is ridiculous and nonsense. Since the Prophet clearly mentioned anybody there's no comparison at all between a woman, dog or ass. Some Muslims thought that only women and dogs cut of the prayer. They failed to know the true words mentioned by the Prophet regarding the things who cut off someone's prayer. That's why Aisha responded to them. The Prophet also had no problem at all with his wife being close to him while praying. Volume 1, Book 9, Number 493. Narrated Aisha. The things which annual prayer were mentioned before me, and those were a dog, a donkey and a woman. I said, you have compared us, women, to donkeys and dogs. By Allah, I saw the Prophet praying while I used to lie in my bed between him and the Qibla. Whenever I was in need of something, I disliked to sit in trouble of the Prophet. So, I would slip away by the side of his feet. The Prophet even had no problem with his menstruating wife being next to him while praying Sahib Dakhari. Volume 1, Book 9, Number 497. Narrated Muna. The Prophet used to pray while I used to sleep beside him during my periods, menses, and in prostrations his garment used to touch me. But how does the Bible view and treat women during their menses? A menstruous woman is unclean seven days and must be put apart. The author of the Bible argues that whoever touches her is unclean. He also argues that the bed and furniture shall become unclean when touched by women in her menses. This discriminating law can be found in the book of Leviticus 15. If a woman has a discharge of blood for many days, not at the time of her menstrual impurity, 
or if she has a discharge beyond the time of her impurity, all the days of the discharge she shall continue in uncleanness. As in the days of her impurity, she shall be unclean. Every bed on which she lies all the days of her discharge shall be to her as the bed of her impurity, and everything on which she sits shall be unclean, as in the uncleanness of her menstrual impurity. Women become unclean during their menstruation which is normal. However it is abnormal to argue that everything they touch also becomes unclean. Secondly it's very insulting to demand that women during their menses should not be touched and be put apart. For seven days, the Bible treats the women who are having their menses as a disease that men must stay away from. After periods, women must offer not only a sin atonement but a burnt offering. The Bible specifies two turtles or two young pigeons, which must be taken to the priest. The priest then begs an atonement for her before the Lord for the issue of her uncleanness. <laughs> I said in my heart with regard to the children of man that God is testing them, that they may see that they themselves are but beasts. For what happens to the children of man and what happens to the beasts is the same. As one dies, so dies the other. They all have the same breath, and man has no advantage over the beasts, for all is vanity. And man has no advantage over the beasts. For so according to the Bible, human is nothing but a beast. Christians should have no problem with the Old Testament, since it's the same God besides. Jesus, peace be upon him, did honor the Old Testament and did say that every single letter of it has to be honored, followed and fulfilled. Revelation is the last book in the Bible. Book of Revelation, chapter 14, verses number 1 to 5. In verses number 1 to 5 here, it is described that there will be 144,000 people in heaven. Now, it is questioned whether it is meant 144 literally, or whether this is a symbolic number, meaning a lot, much larger number, but only 144,000 is mentioned here. Jehovah's Witnesses think that it is an actual number. 144, those are the people who will go to heaven. The rest of the people, if you are good, you will resurrect, you will live right here on earth, but your Jannah will be right here. You live here forever, but this will be it. But the 144,000, they say, these are the only ones who will go to paradise. But who are these 144? How can we describe them? This chapter describes them in verses number 1 to 5. In verse number 4 in particular, it says, These are ones who have not been defiled by women, but they are virgins. Which means, to be that, you have to be a male priest who doesn't get married. And in fact, some of the Bible commentaries, looking at this passage and noticing in modern times that this doesn't fit in with anything that we believe today, they say, well, some of the monks may have written that passage there in the Bible. <laughs> but it is still there. It is there. Now, some people may say that all of that is from the Old Testament, but look, I believe in the New. But I've shown also that the New Testament continues many of the themes from the Old. In fact, that the New Testament says that a woman must be silent. She cannot speak in church, but she must remain quiet. And if she needs to know anything, she should ask her husband at home. Why all these instructions? Because it is said in the New Testament that the woman is the one who caused sin to enter the world. She was the one who was deceived by the devil, but the devil did not deceive Adam, but deceived her. And then, of course, she gave the food to her husband. We have seen also that the woman, according to the New Testament, must cover her head. She must have a veil over herself. Why? Uh, so that she must be, she must prove that she has an authority above her. The husband is an authority above her, so she keeps that head covering as a sign of subjection. So where does the idea that the hijab is a sign of subjection come from? It comes from the Bible.
بعزيمة جبارة كبرى وإرادة لا تعرف القهر وإرادة لا تعرف القهر بجهادنا ونجند الوجدان والفكرة بدمائنا سنلون الفجر ونروده يا أمتي نصرا نصرا بكفاح 